disappearance of this town led to it being dubbed as Demon Alley. Coming into number 7 we have the New City Complex. The New City Complex was built in West Milford, New Jersey. The town was located along Route 32 and was built by the city of Newark Water and Reservoir Plant in order to provide housing for plant workers. Located along Route 23, the town is now entirely abandoned and nobody knows why, although of course there are theories. It is said that the town pretty much dissolved overnight in 1992. Rumour has it that the seeming exodus happened after a dodgy person moved to the town in the late 1980s. Others say that the town was never a town at all, just a set of a movie which has been left to crumble. So is it an inexplicably abandoned town or an urban legend? Coming into number 6 we have the Roanoke. What happened to the people of Roanoke? It is a question still baffling us 430 years later as it seems that not one but two occasions the town actually totally disappeared. Twice! Let me start from the beginning. In 1585, a small group of settlers made Roanoke Island off the coast of North Carolina their home, although many left when they found the conditions to be unsatisfactory. In 1587, 115 English settlers came to join those who had left, but weirdly, they found no one. Like, absolutely no one. Weirdly, though, they didn't seem to be too disturbed by that, assuming they must have just upped and left because they didn't like it. At the time, the colony decided to send their governor, a John White, back to England to gather fresh supplies and fresh settlers to expand the colony. He went back and then three years later he returned with his supplies to the colony. He'd left his wife and daughter there. He was expecting a big reunion. But once again, he found no traces of the inhabitants. Just like the time the settlers had arrived, only this time he knew something was wrong because his family wouldn't have upped and left without telling him. The only clue he found was the word Croatoan carved into a wooden post, which is extremely strange. So where did the settlers of the Roanoke go? They were absolutely never seen again. Now some theorists say that they were killed by a Native American tribe, although the fact that there was no trace of their bodies is absolutely suspicious. Others say that they decided to sail back to England for some reason or another but got lost at sea, but again, I'm saying this town disappeared twice so there really has to be something else going on. Coming into number 5 we have Christmas Arizona. I love a good abandoned town, I really do. I went to Calico in California back in December 2017 and it was so interesting and spooky, but now I really want to visit this town even more. Meet the lost town of Santa Claus in Arizona. Santa Claus! The town was so popular with Christmas lovers despite its untraditional setting in the desert. The town was founded in 1937 and created as a Christmas resort, just you know, cuz. A Swiss chalet, and no I don't mean the chicken place, a Swiss themed house is what I mean, and plenty of Christmas trees, a life sized dollhouse, a Christmas themed inn, basically kids could sit on Santa's lap all year round and they loved it. Until they didn't. Just stop being a town. It's now abandoned by the side of the road. Instead of Christmas pies and elves, all you'll find these days are rattlesnakes and while I love the sound of this, at the same time I feel like it would have sucked for the employees. I once worked as an elf in a toy store and I felt like I had too much Christmas so the actual day was a bit of a letdown so imagine that being all year. To be honest, I'm actually thinking maybe Santa Claus in Arizona is better off disappeared. Coming into number 4 we have Petra. Petra is located in southern Jordan in the Middle East and was settled in the early 9000 BCE. By the 4th century BCE it was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom. Petra was carved into the rock but after the Roman Empire took over the city it started to disappear. At first the population diminished in around the 7th and 8th centuries, then the city became abandoned for centuries, with very little footfall due to its remote location. Petra lay forgotten and all but disappeared as a result of natural disasters and neglect. It was off the map for a very long time until Swiss explorers rediscovered the city in 1812. As stories dribbled back to Europe of a lost town, intrigue grew. Local folklore claimed that the city has been created by the Wand of Moses having actually lost touch with the actual history of the forgotten city. In 1929, archaeologists led an excavation of the city. In 2016, even more of the city was discovered buried in the sands. Coming into number 3 we have the cities of the Amazon. When the dastardly colonists invaded swathes of the world, they brought back stories when they returned to their homelands. The Spanish return home to regale stories of vast cities made of gold and filled with treasure along the Amazon. Some called it the city of Zed other called it El Dorado. This led hungry explorers to seek out the cities, only when they got there they never found them, 
ever all they found was thick jungle. The golden cities that early pioneers had spoken of became nothing but myth and legend, that was until recently. In 2010, aerial images taken by National Geographic revealed earthworks spanning 155 miles in the Amazon. As Amazonian rainforests have been cleared for agriculture, further evidence of ancient pre Columbian movements have been found. So, speaking of this somewhat mythical, we have Atlantis at number two. So, bearing in mind that a lot of people believe that the Amazonian cities were a myth, but now it's looking like they may well have been legit, what do we think the deal with Atlantis is? It's enduring, I'll say that. Atlantis is a legendary city that is mentioned in a number of pieces of ancient Greek literature, including by the late great philosopher Plato. It is said that Atlantis was a thriving city filled with affluence and positivity. That was until it sank. Atlantis was said to have sunk in the sea in a single day and night. There has been a lot of speculation as to where that city may be. People have searched the Straits of Gibraltar between Africa and Spain and found nothing as of yet. If Atlantis was real, it would be over 11,000 years old, according to our calculations. I actually do kind of have a feeling that we may one day find this lost city. Finally, coming into number one, we have Langville, Montana. This is actually utterly creepy, it really has freaked me out. I was doing some heavy research into disappeared places and towns and spaces, and Google Autocomplete kept suggesting Langville, Montana disappearance. Now, it would appear at the bottom in related searches too, as would Langville, Montana incident or Langville, Montana turned inside out, which is some Stranger Things stuff if I've ever heard of it. Oddly, when I clicked the link or even searched it up in the search bar, the internet yielded absolutely no information. Not a sausage. To me, this makes things even weirder, right? Why am I being suggested a mystery town when there's no evidence of it? I'm thinking that not only did this town disappear, but its data was also expunged from the internet. Why? I love a good cover up theory, and let me make it even better with some investigative journalism. Here is the Google trend page for Langville, Montana disappeared. As you can see, it was actually frequently searched for in July and August 2018, then a few times after. Here I've compared it to searches for me, my name. I'm not saying people Google me a lot, but I am a real person on a channel with a lot of subscribers, so it does happen. So there was a time when Langville, Montana was being Googled loads, like super loads. Again, I'm just saying, why is there no record if people are Googling? it. Questions. Questions. We need answers. Surprisingly, there are a lot of haunted towns in the state of Texas. There are a lot on this list, and I feel like they probably make the record for most haunted towns in America. But either way, Wichita Falls is filled, and I mean filled with haunting stories. There's a site in town called the Witch's Gate that used to be a mansion before it burned down in the 70s. After the man of the house died, his wife went a bit insane, turning to things like witchcraft to try and cope. She somehow burned the mansion down, killing her two sons with it. Another story claims the sons were robbed and it was the thief that set the house on fire. The boys haunt the area till this day, and I'm not surprised, I'd be pissed too. Another famous one is the White Sanitarium, presently a private residence, it used to be a mental hospital in the 20s. After the place closed down, people have seen a group of men sitting around a table playing cards, perhaps the hospital's dead old staff, I don't know, but more famously, they've seen a woman in nurse's clothes roaming the building. There's also Pinky's Cave, which is a three mile drainage ditch, and kids used to hang out there years ago, but now it's filled with eerie sounds and homeless people, as well as the ghost of a woman and her child who drowned inside the tunnel during a storm. Coming in at number nine is Pluckley, Kent. Pluckley is a small village in Kent that was named the most haunted village in England by Guinness World Records in 1989. So I don't want to overhype it, but at the same time, it clearly deserves the hype. It's said that 12 to 16 ghosts haunt the village and the surrounding areas. The list includes a screaming man who worked at the village brickworks and fell to his death. Another is a highwayman who was pinned to a tree with a sword. That tree was soon named Fright Corner and that's where his ghost looms every day. The watercrest woman is the ghost of a woman who used to sit on a bridge drinking gin and smoking her pipe while selling watercress. You'd assume she drowned in the river she sat near, but the reality was a lot more grim. It's said she dropped gin all over herself and accidentally 
accidentally set herself alight on the bridge. There's also the ghost of a principal who hung himself and was found by his students. On LV Farm, which dates back to 1406, there's the ghost of Edward Brett who shot himself in the dairy. His last words to his wife were, I will do it, and that's what can be heard whispered around the farm. Then, of course, if we're more generic, there's the white lady and the red lady because make no mistake, there is always a white lady ghost in every list. That's seven ghosts already, and that's not even the end of it. Based on the deaths in the list, I get the feeling there's like an external force in the village that made people slightly suicidal. That's the vibe I'm getting, I'd already know. At number eight, we have Savannah, Georgia. Apparently, it's widespread knowledge that Savannah is the most haunted city in America, and thankfully, I've never been. The town was given this title because literally every building in the town is haunted, like everyone. Every building has a story, every building has its own ghost. It's like Savannah is more for the ghosts than it is for the living. The Hamilton Turner Inn is home to the ghost of a man smoking a cigar on its roof as well as little children. Whose children are they? God knows. Dubbed one of the best haunted hotels in the US because clearly that's a real category, the Marshall House was a hotel that ended up being used as a hospital thrice in its history and thus you can imagine all the dead patients as ghosts running around. 1790 Inn and Restaurant is the home of a scorned woman called Anna who haunts the upstairs guest rooms waiting for her lost love. But why is Savannah so haunted? Let's go back in history. The town has been the site of many and many atrocities. The siege of Savannah that killed 240 people left people thinking unsettled soldiers still lingered there. Savannah has also been the site of a yellow fever epidemic, so that's a lot of people dead just there. In 1820, there was a massive fire in town that destroyed 500 buildings, and there was an even bigger fire 25 years prior that destroyed half that number. The people that died in those fires have been linked to the houses they occupied. And let's not forget the countless murders that have taken place there as well. Filling our number 7 slot is Jerome, Arizona. Mining town Jerome was known as the wickedest town in the west for its brothels, gambling, and heavy drinking miners. The town itself actually burned down three times in three years at the end of the 1800s. At its peak, its population was 15,000, it then shrank to 50 people in the 50s, and currently it's 450 people. Inside the town, the Jerome Grand Hotel adds to the hauntings tenfold. Before it was a hotel, it was the United Verde Hospital where dozens of people died during the Great Spanish Influenza. Coughs, breathing, lights flicking, doors opening, a little child running on the third floor either laughing or crying, it has it all. Sometimes the little ghost just stays at the foot of a guest's bed and stares at them all night. The sounds of newborn babies crying, and many guests have even spoken to the front desk about it out of concern, but then they find out it's coming from an empty room. A maintenance man named Claude Harvey was found under the elevator murdered in the 30s and his ghost wanders around the hotel as well. There's even a ghost cat at this hotel. Can you imagine? I could go on, but I think you get the picture. Other than coming for tourism or to chase ghosts, no one really visits Jerome anymore, sadly. Now at number six is Helltown, Ohio. Founded in 1806 and formerly called Boston, this place used to be the oldest village in Summit County. Helltown was the victim of disappearing forest land when President Ford let the national park jurisdiction expropriate land to make parks. The NPS started buying properties of locals in Helltown and they were pissed. They even wrote, now we know how the Indians felt all over their houses. Which I feel is a bit inappropriate, but either way, that was all for nothing. The plan fell through in the end and the village was abandoned. Things went wrong in 1985 when rangers visited Credge Dump nearby and left covered in rashes and sick. Apparently the dump was highly toxic because chemicals were never disposed of properly. There's also the, um, the issue of the um, satanist church, equipped with upside down crosses and all. Human and animal sacrifices even took place there and that's not all. There was even an escaped mental patient in the woods in the town that killed a bus full of children and that bus is still there haunted by the ghost's murdered past. There's even a mutated snake in the town known as the Peninsula Python so it's safe to say the town lives up to its name and has way too much going on. Coming in at number 5 is Granbury, Texas. This one's a bit of a small one. In 2010 their population wasn't 
even 8,000 so I mean it's an intimate little town. But regardless of that it's been the home for many infamous people over the years. Davy Crockett's wife Elizabeth moved there post the Texas Revolution and Jesse James is even buried in the city of Granbury Cemetery. Billy the Kid apparently moved there too after faking his own death. But the biggest haunted appeal of Granbury is John St. Helen. He moved there in the 1870s to teach and would quote Shakespeare all the time. But people think John St. Helen was actually John Wilkes Booth, the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Apparently, he died in a bar fire and police threw Booth's body into the Potomac River. Others say he was assigned a new identity after the assassination. I mean, in town, he walked with a strange limp and had a southern accent, so people were wary of him. On his death, but he did confess to a priest that he was in fact John Wilkes Booth and told him where he could find the gun that killed Abe. But he didn't die that day. He fled the city, but it's said that when he did finally die, wherever that was, he came back to Granbury. The Granbury Opera House is haunted by him now, and you can hear him quoting Shakespeare all the time. Some things never change. At number 4 is Galveston, Texas. This island city's residents are so used to seeing ghosts around that honestly, they don't even bat an eyelid anymore. During the early 1900s, the city opened the Galvez Hotel to honor military leader Bernardo de Galvez and they commissioned a giant portrait of him to go in its lobby. Soon after the Galvez Hotel opened its doors, guests started complaining this painting would make them feel extremely cold and that his eyes would just follow them everywhere. The hotel is also haunted by a ghost bride who's been seen many times in room 501. It's said she hung herself after finding out her fiance died at sea, but to make matters worse, he didn't even die. He came to the hotel looking for her and for the marriage that would never be. There was also a storm in 1900 which is still considered the deadliest storm in US history that killed 8,000 residents. Mayfield's manor served as a morgue after the storm and it's now haunted all year round 24-7 around the clock. Dash beards does ghost tours of the city and he said he's seen them with his own eyes. Among his many stories is one of an office in town that calls 911 every night. The police have gone there countless times to find the office empty and no telephone even connected. Another story is the ghost of a salesman who died inside Madame Harvey's brothel in the 1800s. A police chief moved his body to a park and made it look like he was you know, feeding pigeons and put him on a bench so it would be less embarrassing for his family and the man's ghost is still looking for his car keys. Filling our number 3 slot is Jefferson, Texas. That's 3 towns in Texas in a row now. I really wasn't lying when I said Texas takes the cake on this list. It's been dubbed one of the most haunted towns in the south by many travel channels and I know it sounds like I'm saying this is one of the most haunted towns ever for every single number but it's true. Either way the town is plagued by the apparitions haunting the Jefferson Hotel and the Excelsior House. Let's start with the hotel. There's a staircase inside which is known to be haunted by little ghosts but like pulling hair and tapping guests' shoulders. Guests have been locked inside their hotel rooms and bathrooms for ages before being let out whilst hearing a creepy laughter from the other side of the door. Orbs also appear in photos taken inside the hotel and all this isn't even scaring me, it's just making me feel annoyed for the guests who have to stay there. Not my problem. I mean not my problem. Anyway, the Excelsior House is another hotel that's basically just as haunted. It houses a headless ghost on the second floor so you know, might want to avoid that and it even houses a woman in black carrying a baby. The ghost apparently even spoke to Steven Spielberg in the 80s and so she got closer to my dreams of becoming an actor than I have and she's dead. Great. Now at number 2 is Kerrville, Texas. This town is specifically known for two haunted buildings whose ghosts seem to go all around the town all the time. The first is Kerr County Courthouse where two tragedies took place. The first was to do with a couple. The man asked his beloved to marry him and she said no. So naturally, in a fit of jealousy and rage, he killed her and then hung himself right in front of the courthouse. Talk about unable to deal with rejection. Man up, boy. Both have been seen over a hundred times at the courthouse and the surrounding area just milling about. Honestly, I'd be so mad if I was the girl, honestly. Like I said, I didn't want to marry you, and now I'm stuck in this afterlife purgatory with you. Just 
Just my luck. Anyway, the second story involves a prisoner who was killed during a rough interrogation, and he too haunts the inside of the building by banging on the bars and throwing papers about. Now, the second building is Delaney Hall in Shriner University. From its name, you can probably guess that it's a dorm building at the university, and it's haunted by eight former students while living students still reside there. The students see doors slamming when the ghosts have fights with one another, and construction workers constantly complain about how their tools go missing because of the ghosts. And finally, at number one is Saratoga, Texas. The Light of Saratoga is the legend of mysterious lights appearing and disappearing on Bragg Road that all residents know. The road runs between Beaumont and Livingston and is next to the ghost town of Bragg Station. A haunted road and a ghost town? What a match made in heaven. So strange lights on roads have been featured in many other videos, so this phenomenon is nothing new. Some think it's simply swamp gas, but the most popular story behind it is that a railroad worker was decapitated decapitated during a railway accident, and the light comes from the lantern his ghost carries as he looks for his head. Honestly, if he survived this long without his head, I don't really think he needs it. The second explanation for the light is a ghostly couple. It said the newlyweds were on their way home on the road when they were stopped by an innocent looking man on the side of the road. However, the man was not innocent at all. He had a gun and a knife and took the man's wife hostage into Big Thicket Forest and killed her there and then disappeared. The man was ordered to wait in the car till they disappeared, otherwise he'd shoot her. He waited and then ran into the forest trying to follow their sounds, but he was too late. So it said the lights on the road are him trying to find his bride's murderer. Love never dies, you guys. Your fiance may be murdered, but your love never dies. Audley's Town. Historians are baffled by the lost county down Irish village of Audley's Town. The town was run by landowner, the then Lord of the Land, Viscount Bangor, who lived in the town's manor, Castlewood. When he died, his wife remarried and evicted all of the townsfolk. She then sent them off on a boat called the Rose, and they were told to set sail to Boston. The Rose left in 1852, but the boat never arrived in the New World. Some say that Lady Bangor. New husband, Major Savage Nugent, hated the town folk and had them killed. These days, the town is covered over by woodland, and part of the disappeared town was used as a setting for Game of Thrones. Coming into number nine, we have the trenches. This is so sad. During World War One, Europe kind of lost it. I say kind of, like it literally did. Countries turned on one another and fought a bloody battle to the death. On one side was Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Canada, and eventually Japan and the United States. On the other was Germany, Austro-Hungary, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire. From October 1914 to March 1918, neither side made much ground and were stuck in a deadlock battle fought in trenches along the western front of France. It is thought that the total length of the trenches was around 2,490 kilometers. Not only did millions of people die in the trenches, they lived in them too. They were forced to live in squalid conditions. Millions and millions of men, for all intent and purpose, these long thin trenches were towns. Then, as the war was over, the trenches were abandoned, leaving a history of bloodshed and violence in the ground. This is what they looked like over a hundred years ago, and now this is what they look like today. This is the battlefield from Beaumont Hamel in France, a notable fighting spot in the Battle of the Somme. Haunting. Coming into number eight is Calico. Here is a picture of me at Calico Ghost Town in California. I stumbled across the place on Christmas Eve Eve in 2017. It was a very interesting time of life for me then, and coming across a ghost ghost town seemed to kind of fit with that weird and intense era. So Calico was an old silver mining town in the San Bernardino mountain range. The town was a flash in the pan of the silver rush era and was abandoned in 1907 with a brief return in 1915 when a cyanide plant was built to try and restore economic fortune. Sadly for Calico, it was to no avail. The town is undoubtedly mysterious and spooky up in the mountains and in the middle of the desert, which is pretty remote. It is also said that the town is haunted by not one but five ghosts. There's a little girl ghost who only appears to children. There's also a ghost named Tumbleweed Harris, the lady in a white gown who wanders the outskirts of town, an angry cowboy, and the ghost of a dog named Dorsey. Coming into number seven, we have the Library of Alexandria. Alexandria is a coastal city in Egypt, sitting at the south of the Mediterranean Sea. The city dates back to 331 BC and was once the thriving capital of Egypt, but was reduced to nothing 
nothing more than a small fishing village in the late Ottoman period. Brutal ransackings and an earthquake destroyed a lot of the original ancient landmarks including the Alexandria lighthouse and Cleopatra's tomb which has notably never been found. Most notably however was the biggest loss suffered by the city, the destruction of the library of Alexandra. Now, This was a massive library, so big that it was hailed as the most significant in the ancient world. It was said to contain the equivalent of 100,000 books which in the early days of the written word was a lot. It's uncertain who destroyed the library, just that it's no longer there. Julius Caesar's been blamed, but so have many people who ransacked the city over its history. Moreover, while the city has been discussed a lot in literature, we don't know for sure if it ever really existed. Alexandria as a city was rebuilt eventually, and a city of the same name stands in its place, but the original landmark is by and large lost to the ground in the ocean, taking many of the secrets of the ancient world with it. Another ancient one up for you next at number 6 we have the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Now, The Gardens of Babylon were one of the 7 wonders of the ancient world. They've been described as some of the most fantastical roof gardens of all time and were thought to have been located in Babylonia in Iraq. The gardens were believed to have been destroyed sometime after the 1st century AD and many archaeologists have spent their lives looking for their remains. The existence is not confirmed by archaeological findings and there have been suggestions that the gardens are mythical. That being said, they were thought to be in Iraq, and much of the country has been super ravaged by war over the years. Okay, I have to deviate from this video for a second to ask if anyone else remembers the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in Bill and Ted, because I absolutely swear that there was a Babylon bit, but I can't find it anywhere online. And rather like the gardens themselves, I'm thinking, are they mythical, or is this like a Mandela effect thing that I've just discovered? Let me know. Coming into number 5, we have Tynum. Tynum in England is a pretty spooky village indeed. The ghost village in South Dorset was abandoned in 1943 at the height of World War II. It was abandoned for fear of bombardment from the German forces. 225 villagers were rehomed, all of which thought that they would return after the war, but mysteriously, the British government purchased the land and kept it for military training. The village is now opened at various times of the year for controlled tourism, but those who have been lucky enough to visit claim that it's very spooky indeed. In fact, some even claim that the village telephone rings even though it's disconnected from wires. The village was featured in a television show, Mysteries of the Abandoned, and this is what was said by visitors. The village pond looks like any other village pond in England, except there's no wildlife there. There are no ducks. It's eerily empty. Shut the front door! No ducks on the pond! Must be cursed, right? I have to say that the documentary is super dramatic and I kind of love it. They claim that it's eerie and that the church remains as it was in the 40s. Have a listen to this. I'm very, very here for the dramatic music. At a darker narrative. Like the cottages which are little more than empty shells. And these are in an unusual state of disrepair. Where are the ducks? Questions. Coming in at number four, we have the lost villages of the St. Lawrence. Controversially, in 1958, nine villages were flooded along the St. Lawrence River in Canada. Now, this was to make way for the St. Lawrence Seaway. The project was unpopular as 6,500 people were displaced, and of those people, the residents believed that the money that they got for their homes wasn't enough because the plans had already depressed property value. The villages were all in Ontario and are now under the water in the St. Lawrence River. Some of the areas are now popular scuba diving spots. Eerily, though, it is possible to spot the outlines of the villages from the water when levels are low. Another sunken city at number 3, we have the withered city of Villa Epicuan. Villa Epicuan was a popular tourist resort near Buenos Aires, Argentina, but unfortunately, it flooded in 1985, which meant that hopes and livelihoods had to be abandoned in the water. Can you imagine? Disappearing into the water, Villa Epicuan became a sunken town. However, Weirdly, the waters began to recede in 2009 and now, after a drought, you can see more of the town emerging from the water than ever. 25 years after it disappeared, it began to re-emerge, only this time it was totally white, stripped of paint. The trees have died after their time underwater and away from the sun, and now they're white too and the whole thing just looks ghostly and twisted and withered. Rusted cars and dislodged bathtubs litter the bank. Honestly, it looks so scary to me, but I also 
And I love it. This town or city, more like, still exists but may not in our lifetime. So, I want to give you a little warning at number two. We have Venice. Venice is sinking. The historic town is made from 118 small islands connected by bridges and dates back to the 10th century BCE. The issue is here climate change and tourism. Cruise ships are turning up in the harbour, which disturbs the waters. Thousands of passengers disembark from the ships and trample the city, rarely without buying anything and contributing to the economy that could actually help save the city. The old buildings of Venice don't have stable foundations and they're gradually subsiding into the waters of the lagoon. Marry that with tourism and overcrowding and the rise in ocean levels in general, and it seems very much on the brink. It would be devastating to lose this city. Finally, coming into number one, we have Happy Valley. Happy Valley is not a happy place to be. The town used to be known as Williamstown and is located between Syracuse and Camden in upstate New York. Founded in 1850, the town was a farming community, but it was abandoned in the Great Depression. That being said, the Depression probably wasn't the reason people left, if the rumours are to be believed anyway. It is said that the men of Williamstown angered a witch that lived on the fringes of the community. How they angered her? Well, some say they taunted her, others say they abused her. Either way, in a fit of rage, the town was suddenly struck with plague that killed a whole chunk of the population. On top of that, crops began failing. Today, those in surviving towns near Happy Valley claim that actually it is haunted and they will not venture into the abandoned spot. If I ever go to Montana, I'm going to stick to eating steaks and walking around to the mountains. I think I would rather run into a full grown grizzly before I would end up in a town filled with ghosts. Well actually no, if I run into a ghost the worst thing that would happen is maybe it would scare me so bad I would leave a hot dookie in my fresh jeans. But a grizzly would literally turn me into hot dookie. If you want to run into the ghost of an old miner, this is probably the best place you can go visit. Garner, Montana was built up during the gold rush and men from all over the land with bigger dreams than brains would travel here to try and strike it rich, finding some shiny rocks. Well, we all know that eventually the gold rush dried up and Granite Montana didn't have much to offer after that. Now it's abandoned unless you count for the various spirits living at the residence. It said that at certain times of day, you can hear a ghost play the piano, which is probably the friendliest thing a spooky ghost can do. Oh, a ghost is like, oh, people are coming. I better play them a good tune so they know I'm not to be trifled with. And it's a hot spot for ghosts lovers from all over the world. An average of 16,000 people a year come to check this place out. Someone should take a recording of that ghost piano song so Ariana Grande can mix it up and make a cool Halloween tune over it. At number 9 we have Hashima. Hashima is an island off the coast of Japan that used to be one of the most densely populated places on the planet. In the mid to late 1900s, it's thought that there were over 5,000 people living per square kilometer. The island was a hot spot because of the major underwater coal mine. Nothing like living next to a coal mine to really strengthen your lungs. It was a booming place until 1974 when the coal mine was gone. After that people started to leave the island in troves. Now the entire place is deserted and there's just a shell of a city. It's almost scary to look at, like it resembles something out of an apocalypse movie. For years it was forbidden for people to visit the island, but now you can do tours in select areas. The ghost stories go deep as well. My favorite is of a little girl dressed all in white who stands on the beach. No one knows what she's looking for, but people think that her family abandoned her on the island because they couldn't afford to raise her. Now her ghost waits on the shore for her family to come back. That is sad. <laughs> At number 8 we have Butugaychag in Russia. The story of this town is probably the worst fate you could ever meet. Between the years of 1945 and 1955, this place was a labor camp. So if you were arrested back then, they might send you up to this place to work in a mine. Now what was in this mine? Uranium! And what is uranium? Radioactive. And what do radioactive things do to human cells? Well, they rip them apart and you die one of the most painful deaths imaginable. It's thought that over 400,000 prisoners died at this camp from the terrible conditions. Working in the mine would literally cut your life expectancy down two months. And the land was previously thought to be cursed. When it was originally found by nomadic tribes, the herd of deer died from eating the grass there. We now know that was uranium poisoning. Now it's said that the place is 
was plagued by the thousands of souls who experienced horrible slow radiation sickness deaths. The town is now shut down and you could go there if you want to die in a few months, but I would probably stay away. At number 7 we have Bodie, California, USA. When we're talking about ghost towns you can bet we're going to cover a lot of places that used to be packed with shiny rocks, especially in America. If you were in the USA back in the 1800s and you weren't trying to dig up a bunch of rocks then what were you doing? You were a huge nerd. What did you spend your time trying to figure out a cure for smallpox? Get out of here you dork! Well, Bodie is a big time gold rush town. It's estimated in the late 1800s Bodie was the second largest town in all of California with around 7,000 people. It really didn't take a lot to be a metropolis back then. You just needed a well, a good saloon and then you were set. The gold deposit was found by the patriarch of the Bodie family. He didn't get to enjoy his findings though because he died in a blizzard not long after. His family built the town and then named it after him. It's said that his ghost still haunts the land. Probably because he's so salty he never got to get rich and fat off his findings. You can visit this town it's known as one of the best preserved ghost towns in all of America. Because of the dry climate the buildings are in great shape. And number 6 we have Uroduro sur Glan France. This ghost town is the site of one of the many horrible acts carried out by the Nazis. In 1944 everyone in the town was forced into buildings by Nazi troops. These buildings were then set on fire and anyone who tried to run for safety was shot. Out of the several hundred people who lived here only 7 people survived. How did they do this? Well they had to cover themselves in the dead bodies of their friends and family. Now the town has never been repaired. It's it stands as a symbol to remember those who lost their lives in the brutal attacks by the Nazis. And paranormal investigators have visited the site and they say it's plagued with tormented spirits. If you know anything about World War II history you know that this isn't even scratching the surface when it comes to the horrific crimes committed by the Nazis. At number 5 we have Pyramidan Russia. This place used to be the most northern coal mine in the world and even though it's cold as hell there and only a thousand people live there it was still an area under constant development. There was a hospital, schools and a recreation center built for all the people who lived there. Throughout the 80s and early 90s it was thought that this town would continue to grow and eventually become a winter hotspot. But the mine eventually dried up in the late 90s and everyone had to pack up and take off. The town was completely abandoned until the late 2000s when tourists started heading up there to bring a little more life to the area. Now there's 20 residents who live there only in the summertime to work at the town's only hotel. This place isn't really high on my lists of must visits. I think I'm going to hit up Turks and Caicos and get drunk on a beach before I freeze my toes off in a former coal mining town. Also if you do plan on visiting this winter wonderland the only hotel in town is said to be haunted. Strange noises can be heard at night and a tall black figure has been said to walk around the perimeter of the building. At number 4 we have Helltown Ohio USA. What a wonderful name. I heard they have an amazing cotton candy store and none of the schools have demons in them. Well Helltown is a focal point of many conspiracy theories. The land was bought by the government years ago and all the people living there were told to leave. Speculation is this happened because there was a chemical spill and the government didn't want to admit their massive screw up. Now the town is left untouched. But there are rumors that there is a giant mutated beast created by the chemical spill that walks around the area. Not really haunted, but a giant monster is in the same vein. At number 3 we have Pripyat, Ukraine. If you guys are part of the most amazing top 10 family then you probably know I put this place on a lot of lists. But it's hard to pass it up. Pripyat is the closest city to the Chernobyl nuclear plant and it's no wonder why it's a ghost town. It turns out people don't like dying an irradiated death. The disaster happened back on April 26, 1986 and it wasn't long after that that everyone started running in the opposite direction. Now vegetation has taken over most of the town but there are a few residents who have returned. But why is it haunted? Well there is the black crow of Chernobyl, also called the black demon, winged creature and many other names. It's said that this thing was seen on the day of the explosion and some people believe that the demon himself caused the reactor to explode. Now the beast stalks the land waiting for I guess another power plant to be built, I don't know what it wants. At number 2 we have Port Arthur, Tasmania. 
There are a few places in history that you can call hell on earth but this is definitely one of them. Port Arthur was once the site of a brutal English prison. The worst criminals in Britain were exiled to this island and it wasn't anything like getting sent to Club Med. I can promise you there wasn't a mojito in sight. The British government would practice psychological experiments on the inmates and this was back in the 1800s so you can only imagine lobotomies and other horrific practices were performed there. The living conditions were so horrible that inmates would kill each other so they could get the death penalty. I mean you could cut out the middleman and just kill yourself but to each his own I guess. Now you can go on tours through the abandoned prison and I don't think I need to explain to you why this place is haunted. And number one on our list is Povaglia, Italy. For our number one spot we've picked a place that has centuries of grotesque history to go along with it. In the mid 12th century this island was used as a place to dump people who were dying from the plague. Thousands of bodies were burned on this island and going to the island was non optional. If it was suspected that you had the black death they sent you and you stayed there until you suffered to death from this horrible sickness. After all this plagueness was done it was a pretty chill spot until 1920 when a mental institution was built on the island. It's said that the head doctor would perform terrible experiments on all the people. He later went mad and killed himself. The shell of the institution still stands and you can go visit it if you want. Also fun fact about the island it's said to be very haunted and there were so many people burned on the island that the soil is 50% human remains. But that's probably just an urban legend. Who knows. Cleveland, Ohio. We are going to kick off this list with a very populated city. There's tons of people living there. Why would this be on our list of places not to visit? Well other than their sports team struggle to stay above 500 every year since LeBron left. This is also a place you never want to go out at night because it happens to be the serial killer capital of the world. I don't know if there's something in the water or if it's watching the Browns every football season but Cleveland has cranked out more serial killers than Walt Disney has Oscars. We have Donald Harvey. Anthony Sowell, Robert Berdella, Gary Hendick, Thomas Dillon, Michael Madison, Edward Edwards, and the Cleveland Torso Murderer and the list goes on. Even some of the top notch dudes like Dahmer cross state lines to chop people up in the Buckeye State. Maybe it's a rite of passage as a serial killer. Like how bands want to play Madison Square Garden because once you've played that stage you know you've made it. Maybe serial killers want to rip out throats in Cleveland so they can put it on their resume. And number 9 we have Acapulco, Mexico. You might end up here just to check out the beach and see the crystal clear water. Especially in the winter time. Go to a place that is nice and warm and drink a margarita on the beach while back home everyone's drowning in snow. But if you head there you're probably going to want to stay on the resort. No trips downtown. This city is a common place for hijackings, illegal roadblocks from rebel forces or cartel, not to mention most of the police and politicians are corrupt and might be more dangerous than the criminals. This place is a hot spot for gang warfare with rival gangs battling each other for control of this territory. The mystery here would be who can you trust? If the police are corrupt, there are gang members in the street and you can't drink the water, I consider staying home in the cold. But maybe getting kidnapped by cartel is less harsh than 30 feet of snow. At number 8 we have Dubai. Known for being one of the richest cities in the world, it's possible that there are more exotic cars in Dubai than any other place on earth. But for a place that should be a mecca of health, science and prosperity with the amount of money flowing through it, it actually has a mysterious dark underbelly. Let's begin with the slave trade. How is Dubai able to create some of the most magnificent modern structures known to man? Well they hire workers from other countries to come over and do the work for them. Sounds like a great deal. You move from another country to one that is much richer than yours and then they immediately give you work. The only problem is they take your passport, you become a slave and they pay you nothing. This has been reported to happen again and again with giant construction companies in Dubai basically working human trafficking operations. Sending out calls to impoverished countries telling them that there's work to be had. Secretly it's all a trap. Also if you're a woman you should know once you cross the border the law isn't on your side. What kind of upside down madness is this? Next time you're planning a getaway you should probably choose somewhere where the law isn't trying to kill you. At 
number 7 we have Juarez Valley Mexico. It shouldn't be a surprise that we are putting somewhere that's on the United States Mexico border on this list of places you don't want to visit. All along this border is a hot spot for drug trafficking and is a place no one would really want to live. During its peak the Juarez Valley was around 60,000 people. Now only 5,000 people live there. Most of them left out of fear of being murdered or extorted by the cartel. If you were to pass through this area you would see a vast landscape of ghost towns and desert. The setting is so eerie and it makes you wonder why the 5,000 people living there haven't tried to leave already. It should be zero. Well if I'm living in a place where the only industry is murder and drugs I might relocate to a city that has a nice safe coal mine for me to work in. This place is so harsh it has been given the nickname Murder Valley. The mystery here is why anyone would ever live here. At number 6 we have Mount Hua China. If you are afraid of heights this next place is going to make you feel like your gut is dropping into your butthole. Just looking at this place I feel like I'm going to have a free fall out of an airplane. This city is up one of China's great mountains and it's a main tourist attraction and it is terrifying. This mountain is considered the most dangerous hike in the world and for good reason. The scenery is beautiful but if you want to get the opportunity to gaze at the amazing landscape you're going to have to walk along wooden planks on the side of a mountain that have no railing just a big chain to hold on to. Excuse me? Look at this video clip. The mystery here is why does anyone do this? Why would you want to go to this place? So you can see how far your pee droplets fall when you piss yourself walking across these planks? The boards look like they were made by a 12 year old who's failing shop class. And there are parts of the mountains that don't even have the boards because they've fallen off. You need to use grooves in the side of this sheer cliff to work your way across. Yeah. No thanks. And number 5 we have Caracas, Venezuela. Just to sum this place up it has the third most murders per capita in the world. If that's not enough to make you steer clear then I don't know what else to tell you. The country also has a dictator in power who loves killing protesters who are just trying to fight for their freedoms. Pesky protesters always wanting to exercise their rights and be treated like human beings. But if militarized police doesn't get you you can hope that one of the many drug cartels will. They will most likely rob you for everything you're worth or kidnap you. I really wonder what would happen if I got kidnapped. I have no money and I don't think anyone would pay to set me free. I would have to start a GoFundMe. At number 4 we have Fukushima Japan. If being on a fault line and having a huge chance of getting hit by an earthquake or being next to an unstable nuclear power plant aren't enough to make you want to not visit this place then I have one more kernel of information that just might make you go to Tokyo instead. After the earthquake hit Fukushima and the power plant was damaged there was a massive evacuation. People left their homes and lives behind just so they could get away from the incoming wave of radiation. And what happened to the abandoned city? Well nature tends to take over and the forest started to move through the city in a huge way. It has been left behind for nearly a decade now and with the expanding forest Forest came wild boars who have been flourishing in the radiation zone. Radioactive boars. This isn't a Marvel comic. It's just super pigs that have been running all over the city and the radiation has seemed to make them stronger. For whatever reason these plutonium pigs seem to be less afraid of humans than the regular kind. Maybe the radiation has made them smarter or maybe dumber. Either way they're more likely to fight. At number 3 we have Pyongyang North Korea. I mean there are tons of reasons why this place is mysterious and why you would not want to go there. There's surveillance everywhere watching everything you do. The secret police will snatch you up out of the streets and then take you to who knows where. And there's also work camps that you can be forced into for getting the wrong haircut. This is for sure one of the most mysterious places on the planet. No one really knows what's going on there except for the high ranking government officials. At number 2 we have Kabul Afghanistan. They say deserts are some of the most mysterious places on the planet and Kabul is smack dab in the middle of one. The landscape seems like a desolate wonder. But if you venture in the city you'll find car carnage and the horrors of war. The invasion of American troops left this place in disarray. There are still suicide bombings, Taliban and public executions. This is not the place you go to to create fond memories. The biggest mystery of this place is where were those so called weapons of mass destruction that gave the Americans free reign to invade. I don't think we're ever going to get the answer to that question. If you are a thrill seeker and you want to head into this war torn area then you better prepare yourself. It's recommended that you take war zone survival training or you could just go 
to the Bahamas and take scuba training. One of those sounds way better than the other. At number one, we have Mayak, Russia. For our number one spot, we have one of the most inhumane experiments recorded in history. Mayak was a town that was built for one sole purpose to do nuclear research. This was back in the 1940s and 50s, so you can imagine that the safety precautions were pretty lacking. Almost all of the workers sent over to build the facilities and perform maintenance were prisoners. They were given an exchange. They could go work in the Mayak facility and in return would be given a shorter sentence. Unfortunately, they didn't realize that they were being set up. The radiation levels at Mayak were so high that no one could survive there for more than five years. On top of tricking people into fatal slave labor, there were also a series of nuclear disasters that led to the death of thousands of people. Nuclear waste from the facility was dumped into a river that 24 villages used as a source of clean drinking water. There was also an explosion at one of the containment facilities that is considered the third largest nuclear disaster of all time. It was so severe that by 1959, every tree within a 10 mile radius was dead. So Bannock was founded in 1862 when John White discovered gold on Grasshopper Creek. Two years later, it became the first territorial capital of Montana before it changed to Virginia City. At its peak, it had a population of 10,000 people. You know, quite a bit for back then. But the sheriff was accused by some of leading the ruthless band of road agents called the Innocents. Early accounts claim the gang was responsible for the murders of over 100 innocent people, though historical records account for about 8. So it's kind of iffy. The sheriff and two deputies were hanged without trial in Bannock in 1864. 22 individuals were accused, informally tried, and hung by the Vigilance Committee, which is the Montana Vigilantes, of Bannock and Virginia City. So the city kept going into the 1930s with a fluctuating population, but then in the 50s, gold workings dwindled. And then Bannock was declared a state park. The last residents left in the 70s. So all that with the Wild West, and then it's a state park now. Kind of funny. On to number nine, St. Elmo, Colorado, USA. So St. Elmo is the best preserved ghost town in all of Colorado, and it boasts the most hauntings and paranormal activity of any ghost town in the state. So it was settled in 1878 as Forest City and officially became St. Elmo in 1880. It was a gold mining settlement, just like many on this list, and the Mary Murphy mine recovered over $60 million worth of gold while it was in operation. It's just a lot of gold. But it's not a complete ghost town right now since it is privately owned with part-time inhabitants as of right now. You could even say the ghosts there are part-time inhabitants too. The most famous one is Dirty Annie. Her real name was Annabelle Stark, but she got her nickname Dirty Annie after her mother passed away. Annie and her brother were left to run the hotel their mother used to run while their father was in the mines. Since their mother was harsh and strict on cleanliness, after her passing, Annie would walk around in filthy clothing with her hair in a mess as a form of quiet rebellion. But anyways, some people say they have still seen her walking around the town, just strutting her stuff, hair a mess, filthy clothes. And then those who inherited the hotel swear the hotel went cold and all of the doors slammed shut when their grandchildren were playing inside. So could that have been Dirty Annie as well? Just toying with the kids? Number 8. Bodie, California, USA So this ghost town sprung up after William Bodie hit gold in 1859. Then from 1877 to 1882 it had more than 10,000 residents and produced over 35 million in gold and silver. Also at one point there were reported to be 65 saloons in town in addition to brothels, gambling halls, and opium dens. Like it was the wild west after all, but that's a lot of saloons. <laughs> but sometimes that mix of money, gold, and alcohol would lead to unexpected fatalities. Newspapers reported that town people would ask in the mornings, have we a man for breakfast? I don't know how to do a southern accent. Anyways, that meant, did anyone get killed last night? Because that's just how it was there. But not anymore. Now there are over 200 abandoned wooden buildings in what is Bodie State Historic Park. The buildings are not restored, but preserved. So you can go see a little bit of the Wild West yourself if you want. Number 7. Cerro Gordo, California, USA So silver was discovered in Buena Vista Peak in 1865. Its discovery brought in miners, but also unsavory characters. At one point, the death rate was one person per week. There was no sheriff for miles around and even the doctor fled the town scared for his life. Basically it had a reputation for death. So once Union Mine closed down in 1938, the population also died down. As of right now, there is one resident, Robert de Moraes, who is coincidentally a former miner. He serves as the town's unofficial caretaker. Number 6. Cahalba, Alabama Cahalba became a ghost town shortly after the Civil War. It was once the capital, but that title was taken away. What is really interesting to me is its ghost, Peeg's ghost. In 1862, the story goes that a young couple was out for a walk on a moonlit night. Romantic. 
As they walked behind Colonel C.C. Peake's house, a glowing ball of white light seemingly just appeared before them. It was just floating on the air. This ball would dart first on one side of the walk and then on the other, and then approach close enough to almost touch them and then recede and disappear into the shrubbery. And then suddenly it was seen beside them floating again. So they thought the apparition was a trick or something fancy, maybe caused by the same peculiar f phase of moon shadows, something like that. So they turned to retrace their steps and then it happened again and appeared in front of them. Went through the same thing. So at this point, the man and his lady determined to test the materiality of the object, but then he tried to grab it and then it darted just beyond his reach, disappeared, saw not again. Other people have seen it in the glowing light, will-o-wisp or whatever it was, from then on was known as Pig's Ghost. Number 5. Kennecott, Alaska, USA Up and to the left in Alaska is Kennecott. It was once a thriving 20th century copper mining town and it is now desolate. From 1911 to 1938, Kennecott employed as many as 300 people in the mill town and 300 in the mines. It Process nearly $200 million worth of copper, but once the copper tapped out, the company that established the town quickly withdrew from the settlement. Kennecott Copper Corporation left abruptly and left behind their equipment, buildings, and belongings. So now the National Park Service and tour operators offer guided access to several historic buildings, including the 14 story concentration mill. That'd be something fun to see, I think. In that mill, they apparently talk about the tales of lucky fortunes, frontiersmen, and tragic endings that occurred in the remote wilderness. Number 4 Shakespeare, New Mexico. USA. Shakespeare was an old mining town that was frequented by outlaws. It was called Mexican Springs first, then Grand, and then became Ralston City when it was a mining town in 1870. When the silver started running low, the population began to run low as well. But then in 1879, before it was about to be a ghost town the first time, most of the land in the city was bought by Colonel William G. Boyle. He gave the town a new start under the name Shakespeare. So apparently Billy the Kid washed dishes at a hotel there, and two notorious cattle raiders were captured and hung. The records state that the two were hung because Russian Bill stole a horse and Sandy King was just a damn nuisance. So Shakespeare closed down after a bigger town sprung up three miles away and the mines closed after the depression of 1893. So it is now a historic site preserved as a monument to the real Old West. A lot of these are out, you know, Old West. Pop up for mining and then they're done. This is me mining now. Number three, Burke, Idaho, USA. So mines were built in 1884 for silver and lead in Burke. And then the town was built after that. What makes this place cozy is that it is built in a canyon that at its widest measures 300 feet wide. Because of this, the railroad went directly through town and shared the way with cars. Whenever the train passed through, cars would have to pull over. When the railway expanded, it ran right through the town's hotel. A covered walkway connected two sides of the buildings and it let five cars of the Northern Pacific Railroad pass through each day. But not everything was well and good in the cozy little town. There were tensions between the miners and the owners of the mines. In 1890, in 1992, gunshots broke out between union men and the replacement workers in the mine. The gunfight escalated and ignited a box of dynamite in one of the mills, causing six men to die. It got so bad that the governor of Idaho sent national guards to Burke and declared martial law. But it didn't stop there. In 1899, when Bunker Hill Mining Company fired 17 miners for joining the union, in response the laborers dynamited the Bunker Hill mine and more lives were lost. Then with all of that history, plus other natural disasters like fires and avalanches, there is talk of paranormal activity in the area. Number 2. Terlinga, Texas, USA. The nickname of this town is Terlinga Ghost Town and the motto is the Texas Ghost Town. It's also both a ghost town and not at the same time, I would say, because in the mid 1880s the discovery of Cinnabar brought miners to the town, bringing the population to 2,000 people, but not much is left of those mining days. Now all that's left is a ghost town of the Chisos Mining Company and several nearby capped and abandoned mines. But also, the 2010 census set it at a population of 58 people. This is mainly due to its proximity to Big Bend National Park, so it's mainly a tourist destination. There's also reported sightings of Elvis singing at the cemetery, so it can seem like Las Vegas in the desert, I guess. More of a desert. La Las Vegas isn't really a desert, you know. Last but not least, number one, Budville, New Mexico, USA. So Budville was a tiny community along Route 66. It was established in 1928 by Howard Neal Bud Rice and his wife Flossie. They made many businesses and Bud cozied up to local law enforcement, but also overcharged at his auto shop and imposed fines for those caught in his speeding traps. That may have not made too many people happy. In 1967, a stranger, thought to be Billy Ray White, entered the trading post and shot and killed Bud and a part-time employee. The assailant left with $450. That day changed the nickname of Budville to Bloodville, literally. Budville was still occupied until 1979 when Bud's widow Flossie passed away and so it's now a ghost town bought and sold many times throughout the years. Even though Route 66 isn't used, it has its own like exit and entrance off the interstate because he cozied up to people that much. We have
day. Number five, we got Paramedian Svalbard, Norway. The archipelago of Svalbard, located between mainland Norway and the North Pole, is home to about 2,145 humans. Not a lot. A thousand polar bears and one seriously bone chilling ghost town. Paramedian, named for the pyramid shaped mountain looming nearby. Paramedian came to prominence in the 1930s when the Soviets took ownership of the area's coal fields and quickly began mining operations. After World War II, they started spending more money on the enterprise building hospitals, cafeterias, and houses, all in the block style fashion typical of the Soviet era architecture. The biggest hit came in 1996 when an airplane flying from Moscow to Svalbard crashes en route, killing all 141 passengers on board, many of them Paramedian residents. The tragedy slashed the morale and it was fully abandoned in 1998. As for the site today, Rachel Neuer of Smithsonian Magazine sums it up perfectly. It was as if several hundred people had abruptly stopped what they were doing and simply walked away. At number four, we have Thamestown, Shanghai, China. China is a big fan of a replica cities. In fact, Shanghai has seven European themed towns built to give wealthy residents a new place to call home. There's a Dutch inspired canal lined neighborhood, a Paris replica completed with a 300 foot Eiffel Tower, and even a slice of Sweden inspired churches and Nordic houses included. But we're particularly fans of the Thames Town. Town. A British coffee catches 40 minutes from downtown Shanghai. Here you'll find a scale replica of the Christ Church, statue of Shakespeare and Winston Churchill, and even some familiar red telephone booths scattered here and there. As curiously cute as this mini city sounds on paper, well it ended up being a complete failure. In fact, all of the seven experimental towns are now pretty much abandoned. Well how do you visit? Well travelers are more than welcome to walk the cobblestone streets of all seven replica cities. To get to the Thames town, they recommend taking the Shanghai Metro 9 to the Song Jing Zing Xing station. And because I'm pronouncing those words absolutely correct, you guys won't get lost. And then, if you make it to the station that I just said, you can take a taxi for the rest of the way. Only about 2.5 miles away and about $2 USD. Finally down, in at number three, for abandoned towns you shouldn't visit, we're talking about the Great Salt Tower, Utah. And if you find yourself in Salt Lake City, Utah, you'll probably we hear about the Great Salt Lake or uh, the Dead Sea of America where you can float on the water. Now I must tell you that you'll encounter corpses of dead seagulls, swarming flies and a putrid odor. If you take the plunge, there's no way to miss the cell tire. A huge building with Moorish domes that you can see at the same time when you can smell the stench. The salt tire that you see now is actually the third one. The first one was built in 1893 in order to provide a safe venue for recreation for families. It became immensely popular with all kinds of events until its pavilion and few other buildings were ravaged by the fire in 1925. Although it was built a second time, it never achieved the same popularity. In a period marked by the Great Depression, World War II, and several mishaps, it finally got destroyed in an arson fire in 1970. The third one was built in 1981, approximately a mile away from the original venue. But you kind of take away the whole history of it, so I can see why it never became as popular. Now, number two on this list, we have Silver City, Idaho, which was at one point one of the largest cities in Idaho. So just imagine one of the largest cities being abandoned. Imagine where I live in Toronto, I'm going out my door, and it's like, where did everybody go? Well, the town was established in the mid 1800s during the, well, you guys guessed it, the gold and silver rush of the Western United States. By the 1880s, the town's population rose to 2,500 people. At its height in the 1880s, it was a gold and silver mining town with a population of around 2,500 and it had approximately 75 businesses. As mining in the area began to die down, so did the city. In 1942, the last mine in the area was closed. Well, you can still visit silver city which currently has around 70 buildings including old churches a hotel and it has a lot of old homes that you can see and finally in at number one when it comes to the creepiest place in America no one can miss a Bannock ghost town because of its paranormal stories this old mining town is located near Grasshopper Creek in Montana the area is famous as a natural historic landmark and operates
operates as a state park in the US. The photos of this place are wild. Literally, it looks like the quintessential wild, wild west. To enter Bannock, follow the easiest ways to get there. From Dillon, you can take the interstate highway route to quickly reach your destination. It was famous as a mining town, but then moved towards a visiting place and gradually the town got empty from the residents before the 1960s. Now visitors come to explore the unlocked buildings. Centralia was once a thriving mining town, but in 2009, the last living residents were finally evacuated from the town due to its toxic atmosphere and general ground instability. Since mining was no longer a career or necessity in the early 60s, the town's mining shafts were left abandoned and untouched, many of which ran straight beneath the town. In 1962, a fire whose origins are unknown ravaged these mining tunnels, turning Centralia into a furnace, burning 140 acres of land, and producing temperatures upward of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit under the earth. 1,000 degrees. That's that's crazy. <laughs> now, this not only caused the ground to crack, but produced toxic smoke as well as ground temperatures that made much of the town uninhabitable. There was no way to extinguish these fires, and they continue to burn hot to this day. Now, if this scenario sounds familiar, that's because it is. Horror fans know that the game Silent Hill was based on this town's tragic history. These days, no one lives there, but I can't believe people were still there in 2000. Nine. Number 9. West Castleton, Vermont West Castleton, once small, was once home to the slate quarries that New England is now known for. It was also the home to immigrants from Ireland, Russia, and Italy post-Civil War, and thrived for some time around 1850 when West Castleton Railroad and Slate Company found themselves on the shore of Lake Bamosine. For roughly 50 years, West Castleton was able to ride the wave of the boom and bust era, but quickly fell to its eventual demise in 1929. It continued to fight a losing battle against the times as slate was no longer a popular option in construction, and that's what they were known for. By the time the Great Depression took hold of the Green Mountain State, the quarries were drained and rendered unprofitable in the 1930s. Along with its moneymaker becoming abandoned, the town was, as well as the people, up and left their homes in search of better opportunities, which makes the most sense. Remnants of the town remain in Bomocene State park where hikers can find various homes crumbling and caving in but still standing that remind them what the 1930s were like. Number 8. Seattle Underground, Washington Many have heard of the Great Seattle Fire which occurred in 1889, but not many know Seattle was also home to an underground shopping network. These stores took a hit after the fire and though they remained open, the city was eventually condemned in 1907. It had become home to dodgy dealings and was deemed fairly unsafe to wander around at that point, while also giving off a creepy vibe of something that was once thriving, but now remained a shell of what it had once home. Today, some of these underground passageways have been restored and are open for tours, however many remain closed to the public and are abandoned still to this day. Number 7. Bulloville, Florida This land was destined for use as a plantation by Charles Bulow in 1821. The goal was to house and grow cotton, indigo, rice, and even sugarcane, with an additional mill building under the construction of John Below. The local natives, the Seminole Indian tribe, didn't appreciate their land being turned into profit and set fire to the setup around January 11th, 1836. And listen, I usually don't support arson, but in this case, good for them. Abandoned by January 23rd, a great rosy glow was observed on January 31st in St. Augustine. John Below, discouraged by the destruction, died three months later later at the age of 26 and was buried in St. Augustine. All that is left today of this plantation are the ruins of the sugar mill, several wells, a spring house, and a crumbling foundation of the mansion. The cleared fields have been reclaimed by the forest and the area looks much as it did when it belonged to the Seminoles. Number 6. Roanoke Island, North Carolina The legend of Roanoke Island has been passed down from generation to generation since 1590 when a group of 120 English settlers mysteriously vanished. In the 
late 1500s, the English made their first attempts to settle in North America on Roanoke Island, which is off the coast of North Carolina. These first settlers ended up returning to England because of a shortage of food and Indian attacks. In 1587, a second colony was founded on Roanoke. It was then that Virginia Dare, the first baby born to English parents in North America, was born. John White, the leader of the colony, went to England to get more supplies, but when he returned in 1590, the settlement was deserted. All the settlers had mysteriously disappeared, and the only clue he found was the word Croatoan carved in a tree. Croatoan was the name of an island south of Roanoke that was home to a Native American tribe of the same name. Perhaps then the colonists were abducted by Native Americans, but to this day, no one knows what happened to them. Number 5. Langville, Montana Langville was actually a real town in a small rural spot, possibly on the eastern plains. Now apparently it vanished entirely sometime in the early 2000s. The town even showed up on Google Maps, but no one could find it in person. Google Maps apparently has saved images from street views, but no map of the town. There has also been more than 7 million recorded searches for the town, and they have come up with. No one seems to know why or explain this as it doesn't exist. Today you'll struggle to find any photos or online mention of it. Legend has it that sometime in the early 1900s, a mysterious force swept over Langville and turned its inhabitants inside out. The inside out inhabitants either died off or disappeared shortly after. Then some entity or organization didn't want anyone to know what happened. They came along and washed away all evidence of the town's existence. The cover up went so far as to scrub the internet of any mentions, evidence, or accounts. Believers would tell you that Langville disappeared because its people vanished under nefarious circumstances. Furthermore, they believe the government wants to keep it a secret from us, and it seems like only the inhabitants could give us the truth. Number 4. St. Pierre Marnique In the late 1890s and early 1900s, St. Pierre Marnique was known as a beautiful town, but they had something unique, a volcano. Now, citizens of the area were so used to the volcanic activity that no one took it seriously when fresh steaming vent holes and earth tremors started during April 1902. The minor explosions began at the summit of the volcano, ash began to rain down continuously, and the nauseating stench of sulfur filled the air. Again, no one thought this was an issue and that they should have left town. Even worse, more than a hundred snakes slithered down and invaded the town. Then on May 5th, a landslide of boiling mud and water from the Atang Set Crater Lake spilt into the River Blanche. It was followed by a tsunami that ended the lives of hundreds of people. Then three days later, May 8th, Mount Pili exploded, sending an avalanche of white hot lava straight towards the town. Within three minutes, St. Pierre was completely obliterated and of its 30,000 population, there were only two people who survived. This was the worst volcanic disaster of the 20th century. Number 3. The New City Complex, New Jersey This town was originally called the New City Complex, but later was called Demon's Alley, and you'll find out why. Located along Route 23, the town was built by the City of New York Water and Reservoir Plant in order to house the workers of the facility. Things seemed to be pretty normal for a while, and then in 1992, it was found that the homes were were abandoned, with no sign of burglary and everything in order, all possessions left behind, and in some cases, even meals left out for people who would never come home to eat them. Ever since, legends have abounded. One very popular story is that in the 1980s, a stranger moved into the town, after which there were various unexplained phenomena, and it was soon suspected that this newcomer was a cult leader. The mysterious individual then apparently led most of the townspeople down into the basement of one of the homes on false pretenses. And and then proceeded to have their lives ended by members of his cult. Now there is no evidence that this took place, but the legend persists. Other theories are that the homes are abandoned set of a movie, or the site of a bout of rando or carbon monoxide poisoning, or that it was haunted, but no one really knows. For now, these houses sit rotting away and have become a popular urban legend in the area. Number 2. Urkhammer, Iowa This small rural town was apparently in rather good shape until around 1928, when some aerial photos emerged that appeared to show that there was no one living there, and that the field looked overgrown and untended. Things took a turn for the weird when there was a report from a tourist passing through who stopped at a gas station in the town to fill his tank, after which he had learned he had been ripped off and there was no gasoline in there at all. He then angrily headed back to town, but reported that he could not reach it, as it seemed to forever remain in the distance no matter how fast he drove. Even when he 
ran out of gas and walked, he could not reach the town, which was still sitting there before him, forever out of his reach. Other people driving past the town began to report that the previously bustling town seemed to be abandoned and lifeless, and when some investigated, they found rows and rows of houses sitting peacefully with no sign of the occupants. Other reports of anomalies would come in from the town as well, such as people who seemed to have witnessed the town actually evaporating into thin air, as if being absorbed into some other dimension, with one such account concerning a group fleeing from the area during the Dust Bowl of 1932 and going to the town to retrieve supplies. And coming in at number one is Ashley, Kansas. Ashley was a tiny farming community of around 700 people, and on August 16th, 1952, the area was rocked by a massive earthquake measuring 7.9 on the scale. When investigators finally arrived, it was oddly found that there was simply no one there. There was a smoking, heat belching blaze fissure measuring a thousand yards in length and approximately 500 yards in width. They found no one there, neither alive nor dead, even after a 12 day intensive search. An aftershock allegedly rocked the region in the coming days after the aborted search and when rescuers arrived. This time, the fissure was reportedly gone as mysteriously as it had appeared. Now, days before everyone disappeared on August 8th, there was a report from a local who claimed he had seen a small black opening in the sky, and not long after, police were bombarded with calls reporting the same thing. Things got stranger still when reports kept coming in about the weird atmospheric anomalies and that there were also people who had mysteriously gone missing without a trace. Other reports would filter in that the town was in total darkness as if the sun had never risen. Perhaps even more bizarre still were the reports that people were having conversations with long dead family members. Police would get hundreds of similar calls in the coming days, after which it was claimed that all of the children in the town had spontaneously vanished middle of the night on August 12th, 1952. And by August 16th, everyone was gone. Centralia in Pennsylvania. This is a town that's more eerie than it is mysterious due to a long burning underground coal mine, fire that started in 1962 and continues to smolder to this very day. Once a thriving coal mining community, Centralia is now a nearly deserted place with cracked smoke emitting streets that seem to like belong to a post-apocalyptic kind of world. Seriously, just like look at some of these Images. That is freaky. There's graffiti everywhere. There's these large cracks and roads with smoke that just constantly is billowing out of it like it's just been hit with a blast from an alien ship or something. The fire, which ignited in the coal mines beneath the town, led to widespread evacuations over the years. Homes were abandoned and the population dwindled as toxic gases and unstable ground made the town pretty inhospitable. What's left is a place where steam rises from the ground and graffiti covered highways lead to empty streets. Number nine, Bodie, California. If you've ever wanted to hop into a time machine and visit a gold rush era town, uh, then this place is for you. Only you won't find any people there anymore, but the homes and buildings are still standing. Nestled up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, this is a real deal ghost town that's been frozen in time. Walking down its quiet streets with old wooden buildings on either side of you, you can almost feel the history oozing out of the place, but Bodhi isn't just about history. It's also said to have this strange vibe going on, even for a ghost town. A lot of folks who visit swear they've felt some ghostly stuff happening here. Nowadays, it's a state park, and they're careful to keep things looking just like they did back when everyone packed up and left town. So as you wander around, you're basically walking through a time capsule. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Lenoria in Chile. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, this place was a buzzing salt pepper mining town filled with life and industry. But as time went on, the demand for salt pepper declined, and by the mid 20th century, Lenoria was left abandoned. Now, when you visit Lenoria, you'll find it frozen in time. The town's buildings have decayed though, but what makes this ghost town especially creepy is all the bones. More on that in a minute. Walking through the deserted streets, you can't escape the feeling of stepping back in time when Lenoria was a thriving hub of activity. The place is also very isolated. It's the, in the middle of the desert, so that definitely adds another layer of spookiness to the place. But as stated before, 
before, one of the most haunting aspects of this place is the old cemetery and all the damn human bones. Here you'll find open coffins, some still housing human remains. Over the years, the ghost town was looted, so bones are scattered everywhere, pretty unsettling. It's said that you should never wander to this town at night as the tortured souls of the dead arise from their graves and wander about. In at number seven, we have Hashima Island. Hashima Island, often referred to as Battleship Island due to its distinctive shape, is located off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan. This island played a vital role during the early 20th century as a coal mining community housed a substantial population of miners and their families in high-rise concrete apartment buildings. As the coal industry declined, though, Hashima Island saw a gradual depletion of its inhabitants, leading to its ultimate abandonment by the 1970s. And today, it's a time capsule offering a direct look into its past. The island's concrete structures still stand today, although they've been exposed to decades of coastal elements. There's abandoned apartments, schools, and shops that remain untouched. It's pretty eerie. Next on the list is Orador sur glane in France. Orador sur glane a village in France, holds a very dark and tragic history from World War II. Back in 1944, during the chaos that was the Second World War, the quiet village became the site of a brutal massacre by German troops. It's a very heartbreaking story where German soldiers laid waste to the entire village, not even sparing women and children. They left the village in complete ruin, and these were mostly civilians. They would herd them into churches and set them on fire, gunning down anyone who attempted to escape through the windows. It was just a complete massacre. Only six Six members of the village actually managed to escape. The village was never rebuilt either. The remains still stand today though, just frozen in time, like left exactly as it was when these horrors unfolded. The streets, buildings, and even the vehicles remain as they were, showing the signs of violence that took place there. As you can probably imagine, the place is eerily quiet. There's no one living there, and the usual sounds of daily life are completely missing. Number five, Mount Sinabung, Indonesia. Mount Sinabung in Indonesia. This is something that is still ongoing. It's a series of volcanic eruptions that have led to the evacuation of villages in the surrounding area of the volcano. Mount Sinabung, located in North Sumatra, has been active for centuries, but in recent years, it's become particularly volatile, and the eruptions have posed a significant threat to the communities living in the vicinity of it. When Sinabung starts to rumble and spew ash and lava, local authorities kick into action. They closely monitor the volcano's activity and issue evacuation orders when necessary to ensure the safety of the residents. And these orders are not taken lightly as volcanic eruptions can be unpredictable and course deadly. The process of evacuating towns and villages near the volcano is pretty challenging. Families leave their homes behind, their possessions, and sometimes even their livelihoods. Temporary shelters are set up to provide a safe haven for those displaced by the eruptions. And these shelters offer basic necessities like food and water, medical assistance. But the evacuations are not only a physical upheaval, but also an emotional one. As you can imagine, families are forced to leave behind their ancestral lands and the life they've known for generations. And at number four, Bangar in India. Tucked away in the Alwar district in Rajasthan, Bangar isn't your average town. It's famous or perhaps infamous for being one of the spookiest spots in the country. So the story goes like this. Supposedly, back in the 17th century, a sorcerer cast a curse on the village and things went downhill from there. The place was abandoned, and it's been a ghost town ever since. People who visit often say they feel this strange, unsettling vibe, especially after dark. Some even claim they've seen ghostly apparitions. Bangkar isn't your typical tourist spot, but it draws in thrill seekers and folks curious about the supernatural. Folks like me, I would uh, absolutely love to check this place out. The town's got these, of course, old ruins for temples and houses just sitting there as if time stopped 
centuries ago. And speaking of time, they've got a rule. Nobody's allowed in after sunset, because, you know, ghosts and demons and all that. Obviously hard to say if the place is genuinely haunted, but the legends surrounding the place and the deserted structures make it a magnet for those who, uh, you know, love a good scare and dose of history at the same time. At our number three spot, let me take you to Ruby, Arizona. It's a real gem in the desert. Wish I could say that pun was not intended, but it was. Back in the early 20th century, this place was buzzing with life, all thanks to the copper mining boom. It was a kind of town where everybody knew everybody, and things were looking pretty good. But as they say, what goes up must come down, and the copper boom fizzled out, and by the mid-1900s, Ruby was nothing more than a ghost town. The folks moved on, and what they left behind is a piece of history stuck in time. Those that wander around Ruby today feel like they're stepping into a time capsule. There are houses, a school, a general store, all just sitting there as if the residents were there one second and gone the very next. A slice of life from another era preserved in the desert. What makes Ruby even cooler is its remote location. You're out there in the rugged desert and you can't help but feel a sense of isolation. As you can imagine, I've never been. That's probably why it's a magnet though for history buffs and, and folks who love exploring the past. And in our second place spot, we have Poviglia in Italy. This a small island off the coast of Italy is known for being one of the most haunted places in the country. Poviglia's history is pretty dark. Back in the days of the bubonic plague, they used this entire island as a quarantine zone for the sick and dying, and thousands of people who were infected with the plague were shipped off here to keep the disease from spreading to the mainland. You can only imagine the horrors that went on. No surprise why this place is often referred to as the Island of Death. As if that's not creepy enough though, in 1922 there was a mental hospital built here. Rumor has it that some pretty messed up experiments were conducted on the patients too. Stories of mistreatment and suffering are enough to send a shiver down your spine, and today Poveglia is abandoned and said to be one of the most haunted places in Italy. Visitors have reported strange noises, ghostly apparitions, and an overall sense of dread when they set foot on the island. But considering its history, it's not very surprising. In fact, though, the Italian government has banned people from going there. You need special permission to uh, even get close. Finally, though, we have Pripyat in the Ukraine, probably the most famous abandoned town in history. Pripyat was once a bustling city, home to workers of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was a typical Soviet-style town, with apartment buildings, schools, all the amenities you'd expect in a thriving community. Life was humming along until that fateful day on April 26th, 1986, when the Chernobyl disaster struck. There was a catastrophic explosion at the nuclear plant that released a massive amount of radioactive material into the atmosphere. Pripyat, being just a stone's throw away, was in the direct path of the destruction. The entire city was evacuated in a hurry, and its residents left behind their homes. Some of their belongings are still there. Even their pets were left behind, uh, thinking at the time that they'd return soon, but they never did. And today, Pripyat is a complete ghost town. The abandoned buildings, the rusted playgrounds, the empty streets, and that's all that remains. A time capsule of Soviet life in the 80s, but with a radioactive twist. Because yeah, the, the post-apocalyptic look looking setting isn't creepy enough already. There are mutated animals that have been reported in the area too. Uh, would definitely be a pretty surreal place to experience. Geiger counters click away as you walk through the eerily quiet streets. Nature is taken over with trees growing through apartment windows and wildlife returning to the area. Would you ever visit this place? I, I honestly, I think I would. If all the proper safety measures were, uh, were in check, I think I'd have to. This town in Fukushima prefecture once housed 20,000 residents, but in one night, in March of 2011, the most destructive 
earthquake in Japanese history hit off the coast. This caused a massive tsunami that hit a nearby power plant. After three meltdowns and widespread nuclear fallout, the residents were forced to evacuate. The town was completely abandoned for a year until April of 2012 when residents were allowed to slowly make their way back in, but only in two designated zones. Zone 3 was completely off limits and still remains so to this very day. There have been many attempts to try and rebuild the town into what it once was. Rents have been reduced. There's even been plans to build a Pokemon themed theme park, but most uh, people just don't want to go anywhere near the place based on the radioactive contamination, which uh, is understandable. Number 9. Kantubek, Uzbekistan This abandoned town sits on Vazrozdanya Island and was abandoned in 1992 after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. This town was built to house about 1,500 people. Most of its residents were scientists working at a top secret USSR biological weapons testing site. This place became an absolute nightmare following a couple, you know, little accidents that left a number of people infected with smallpox. After a field tests went wrong. Uh, two people ended up dying. Then about a year later, two fishermen were found dead, likely from the bubonic plague that had leaked out of the testing facility. Then antelopes started killing over and dying. Uh, dead fish were being hauled out of the sea in big nets. Uh, the island became a dumping ground for anthrax in the 80s until the lab was finally closed down, with the town becoming deserted by 1992. Apparently there's plans to turn the area into a national park. I I would not go anywhere near this place. In 2002, there was a US led expedition to neutralize the anthrax because uh, they were scared that, like, possible bad people were going to try and get their hands on it. Uh, even still, though, I don't know, just let bygones be bygones. It, radioactive, is, is it ever fully gone? You know? And at number eight, we have Craco, Italy. Man, this place looks beautiful. Just wanted to start by saying that. There's definitely an eeriness with abandoned towns, but this one has such a majestic quality about it. It doesn't look all depressing and gray like an abandoned city you'd see in Russia or something. So, Craco is a historic hilltop town located in the Basilicata region of southern Italy. Its history dates back to the 8th century when it was founded by the Greeks. The town prospered during the medieval period when its economy based on agriculture and craftsmanship. But in the 20th century, Krako faced a number of issues. In 1963, a landslide forced many residents to abandon their homes and relocate to a nearby valley. There were also earthquakes in 1972 and 1980, which further damaged the town's infrastructure, making it basically uninhabitable. The Italian government declared Krako a ghost town, and the remaining residents were forced to leave due to safety concerns. Today, the town stands as this hauntingly beautiful shell of what it once was. The buildings are crumbling, the streets are empty, at least when tourists aren't visiting. The town's also been used for a filming location for a number of movies, most notably Quantum of Solace. Next on the list is Wittenoom, Australia. This is just a very sad story. So, this town was built in 1947 in Pilbara, Western Australia, housed 20,000 residents, and was bustling with life at one point. They had a movie theater, two schools, a hotel. The parents of most of the families living there, uh, though, worked in the nearby Blue Asbestos Mine. This was a time where people didn't know how harmful asbestos was. By the mid-60s, though, it became a known thing and the mine was shut down and a lot of residents up and left. The thing is, they'd already been exposed to it for so long, over 2,000 of these former residents would go on to die of asbestos-related illnesses. The area has now become known as Australia's Chernobyl. Number six, Pyramiden. Pyramiden in Svalbard, Norway, was once a thriving Soviet coal mining settlement established in 1910 by Sweden. It was later sold to the Soviet Union in 1927. The town's name translates to the Pyramid in various languages, named after the pyramid-shaped mountain nearby. During its peak, 
Pier Maiden housed a significant population. The town's economy relied heavily on coal mining, and it continued to operate under Soviet management until the early 90s. But in 98, Pier Maiden was abruptly abandoned when mining ceased. The residents left behind buildings, possessions, and remnants of this once vibrant community. And today, Pier Maiden stands frozen in time as a ghost town. And the harsh Arctic climate has preserved the town remarkably well. Buildings remain standing, showcasing this Soviet era architecture and interiors and the town's infrastructure, including the swimming pool, school, cultural center, still eerily intact. And at number five, Bannock, Montana. This abandoned town in Beaverhead County, Montana was founded in 1862 after the discovery of gold in Grasshopper Creek. Quickly became a booming mining town, attracting thousands of prospectors and settlers seeking fortune in the gold fields. With the prospect of wealth though, came a ton of violence and lawlessness. In 1863, the infamous Plummer Gang, led by Henry Plummer, became the town's sheriff, secretly organizing a gang of outlaws who terrorized the area. There were a series of robberies, stagecoach holdups, violent deaths happened as a result. The citizens fed up with this rampant crime, formed the Vigilance Committee, which eventually captured and hanged over 20 members of this gang, including Plummer, in a single night. Shootouts, barroom brawls, other violent incidents it was just happening all the time here back in the day. It was your classic Wild West town. But as the gold reserves dwindled and new mining opportunities came about in other places, the town's population started to decline. Today, Bannock stands as this well-preserved ghost town with over 60 historic structures remaining, including houses, saloons, and a schoolhouse. Because of its violent history though, some visitors and locals believe the place to be haunted. Numerous ghost stories and paranormal encounters have been reported over the years. Next on the list, we have Frisco in Beaver County, Utah. This was a mining town that boomed in the late 19th century. Established in the 1870s, it was named after the San Francisco Mountains. The miners extracted silver, lead, and zinc from nearby mines. During its heyday, Frisco was notorious for its lawlessness and violence. The town earned a reputation as one of the wildest mining camps in the West. Shootouts, brawls, and other violent things were common. At one point, multiple men would die violently on a nightly basis. I've heard up to 12, which is insane. I don't know if that's true. 12 a night? How would you even have people left after like a month? But anyway, but as the mines were depleted, and economic opportunities started to die down, the town's population began to decline. By the 1920s, the place was mostly abandoned. It's now a complete ghost town with abandoned structures, crumbling homes, and decaying industrial facilities. Number three, Centralia, Pennsylvania. Centralia used to be a lively, you guessed it, coal mining town in Columbia County. Back in the mid 1800s, coal mining really kicked off and the town prospered through the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but trouble began in 1962 when a fire started in the coal mines beneath the town. Nobody knows exactly how it began, but it's believed to have started in a landfill, an abandoned strip mine pit. Efforts to put out the fire failed and it kept burning underground. By the 80s, it became clear the situation was just dire. Carbon monoxide was seeping from the fire. The government stepped in, and in 84, a law was passed to move Centralia's residents. Most buildings were torn down, and people were relocated to nearby towns. Even today, though, like smoke and toxic gases are, continue to rise from the ground. It, it's very apocalyptic looking. In its second place, we have St. Elmo, Colorado. St. Elmo is a ghost town located in Chaffee County, Colorado. Founded in the late 1800s, St. Elmo was once a thriving mining town, mostly focusing on gold and silver mining. There was a general store, hotels, saloons. Over the years, as mining activities started to die down, residents left St. Elmo, and by the 1920s, the town became mostly abandoned. But today, many of its original buildings still stand. This place is a ghost town in more ways than one though. Annabelle Stark, also known as Dirty Annie, was, was uh, one of the last residents of the town. 
town. She lived there with her brother Tony Stark, who suffered from mental health issues. As the town started to empty, Annabelle and Tony were among the few who still remained, and Tony's mental state deteriorated further due to the isolation and lack of social interaction. He was often seen walking the streets, muttering to himself. Annabelle, caring for her brother, lived a reclusive life in their decaying family home. Dirty Annie Stark became something of a local legend, known for her resilience and determination to stay in St. Elmo despite its abandonment. Some reports suggest that Annabelle and Tony were eventually the very last two residents of the town, refusing to leave even when most of the buildings around them were completely empty. Today, this ghost town is said to be haunted by the ghost of Dirty Annie, still roaming the empty streets at night as it's ghostly protector. And finally, we have Ardour sur Glane in France. The 10th of June 1944 was a dark day for the residents of this quiet farming village. SS Major General Heinz Bernhard sent his troops in the Waffen SS Panzer Division to the village in retaliation against French resistance activity in the area. They wanted to send a message, so they destroyed the entire village and pretty much everyone in it. Even people just passing by the area were dragged into the massacre. In the end, only six people managed to escape. These victims were just civilians, mostly being women and children. People were taken to barns where they were down with machine guns. Others were loaded into a church which was set on fire. Anyone attempting to escape through the windows were down. It was about as nightmarish as it gets. And today, what remains of the village still stands, left exactly as it was after the massacre. A haunting reminder of the atrocities that took place on that day.